there's something to be said about movies based on true events. Why do we step outside of the fantastic to live in the world of reality once more? Why would I see a movie about a dude that lived for real when I could see a little twink become a god wizard? Well, frankly, I wouldn't, especially on that pitch, but studios seem to think that people love biographical stories, and they're not wrong. Whether it be the star power of who a biopic is about, or the strength of the story itself, a film based on true events is often easier for an audience to resonate with. The biographical genre is a guilty pleasure for me. A lot of the time the movies are complete ass, but there's something about the way that they're paced that makes me feel like I've experienced a portion of a life outside of my own, in a way that I just don't get from most other stories. It's easier to get lost in, especially when it's done well. When I spun the wheel last time, I had no clue that the two movies I got were from the same director. We've got James Mangold's Walk the Line 2005 and Ford vs. Ferrari 2019, or Ford v Ferrari, depending if you're a dickhead or not. Both biographical stories, both received well critically. Same director, 14 years apart. The difference between the two, well, one succeeds and the other, in my opinion, fails tremendously. Which is which? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? Where are your parents? We're working with history in this episode, so get ready for... What do you think, George Harrison of the Beatles? I don't know, you know, I'm just trying to get some more songs on the air. And, you know. and as Ringo Starr, I'm not so interested in meditation. I just like to have fun. <laughs> I like the little one. Walk the Line is a film about how horny Johnny Cash was, and how badly he wanted to cheat on his wife. I'm not kidding, that's pretty much the core of the movie. Joaquin Phoenix is maybe at his worst here, and, you know, I'm not really the type to schlonk his doink like uh, Da Joker fans, but I think he's pretty solid in mostly everything I've seen him in. Not sure if it's Mangold's directing, the lameness of the script, or even maybe the lameness of the events the script is based on, but... This shit just does not hit. Everyone is lame here. In my opinion, there isn't even a single standout performance. So yeah, which one fails? It's the movie that got eviscerated by the best parody film of the odds. Ford vs. Ferrari, on the other hand, we're talking about that damn movie that legalized farting. That one, pull my finger, you find out. <laughs> Ford v Ferrari is the story of the Ford Motor Company's rivalry with Ferrari, but more so the story of the Ford race team. Christian Bale slaps in this movie. His character has this not giving a fuck attitude that, it, I mean, it's just hard not to admire. Matt Damon? He's just doing his normal ass Matt Damon ass shit, which is to pretty consistently elevate any movie about one half star. If I had to judge based on performances alone, it just really kicks the shit out of Walk the Line. These characters are likable. You want to follow them and see where their story goes. That's like the point of these damn things. I think they're called movies. Just something that Mangold just wasn't really attuned to when Walk the Line was made. Walk the Line, I think, suffers the worst in its general structure. There's no real momentum, no real reflection on Johnny's life other than, yeah, he has daddy issues, bisected brother disease, BBD, and he is horny as shit. But, you know, Johnny, he had demons. Bro, shut up. The only damn demons this man had is the damn demon that makes you slay the lion. Johnny, if you ever get resurrected zombie scary style and you want to cheat on your dead wife, please call me. The movie's triumphant ending is literally him coercing his co-star on stage to say yes to a proposal. Maybe I'm missing something, but that shit, it's just uncomfortable. And to end your movie on that, that's uh, a certified stinker move. 
I think that Ford versus Ferrari works a lot better because there's a clear goal, a clear structure to the movie. Ford will go against Ferrari. I think the ending of the movie suffers a bit after Ford has beat Ferrari, but overall you can feel the real momentum of the movie, which is perfectly apt for a movie about racing. Walk the Line, on the other hand, it fucking walks. Shit's boring. Visually, Ford v Ferrari is engaging and sharp. Walk the Line? Well, there were definitely cameras that recorded people acting. I think I could say that pretty confidently. The director of both the films, James Mangold, seems like a very hit or miss director to me. He directed The Wolverine, which was pretty decent, but then he went on to direct Logan, a movie often paraded as the peak of the superhero genre, for whatever that's worth. Last year, he directed Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which, I'll say, was not a very big fan of. It's interesting to me when a director has such variance throughout their filmography. It's the kind of thing that just makes me more aware of how each film is always the sum of its parts. Of all the hardworking people who put their heart into it. Like everything, circumstances make or break. I'd like to say based on the improvement from Walk the Line to Ford v Ferrari that Mangold has refined himself as a filmmaker, but stuff like Dial of Destiny makes me hesitant to stake that claim. What I can say is that it's clear that Walk the Line does not have the beating heart to be worth anyone's precious time. Walk the Line struggles to have a core for the audience to fall in love with and relate to, whereas Ford v Ferrari, well, it hits exactly what a biographical story needs to succeed. It's emotional, it's tense, it's a human story. And it has Christian Bale and Matt Damon. I think I'll put Ford v Ferrari in lowish B tier, good stuff. Saving Private Ryan has left me with more overall, so I'd say it has a pretty high lead over Ford vs Ferrari. I appreciated how a good amount of the framework of Ford v Ferrari was about logistics and the organizational structure of Ford. It's nice background texture that might be a little boring to some people, but I think it elevates the movie a bit for my taste. Walk the Line is looking like the king of the bottom right now. Not really nightmare bad, but definitely a schlog. Even worse than Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. It's so nice seeing the list already start to fill out like this. If my lazy ass does keep actually keep on doing these, then this thing is going to look crazy by the end of the year. Alright, let's spin this fucking goddamn stupid ass wheel. I'm not. Okay, Grindhouse, that's... I could be getting it confused with another one, but isn't that the uh, Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez, like, double feature anthology movie thing? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to fucking do it, dude. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. All right, and then I'm comparing Grindhouse to... Okay, uh, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. I think that's the subtitle. Uh, okay, cool. I've been kind of dying to watch this movie finally. So, kind of, kind of, kind of interesting. All right, see you next time.